uh, let's uh, pick up on what happened this afternoon. With me now, uh, Dr. James Boyce, who's a political analyst of American history and of what's going on at the moment. Bronwyn Maddox is director of the Institute for Government. Now, uh, let's just, what was your first impression of that news conference in the, ho in the whole? I thought it was fascinating, especially the chemistry between the two leaders. Uh, Theresa May started off very formal, started introducing Donald a bit forced into her language. I was waiting to see whether Donald Trump reciprocated by Theresa, and of course it wasn't. It was very, very formal on his account, I thought, uh, hitting all the, uh, the right points, but really no demonstration of warmth between the two leaders, I didn't think, from the American point of view. Did you agree? No, no, I thought they were, they, they were a bit more pally than that. I mean, they've certainly got a working arrangement. I thought, I thought Donald Trump is trying very hard to be very controlled, very measured. The bit that he, where he sort of burst out of that for me was where he said, no, oh, I didn't see any demonstrations. Well, maybe a few protesters. I saw love out there in London, just as the crowds in some numbers are gathering behind us to demonstrate against him. And he made the same kind of claim about the Republicans in America. They love me, and quoted very high. So there was, uh, that was, I mean, he, he really, really cares. Uh, about, about, about that, but then there was more positioning stuff on trade deals and so on that, that I think we should take seriously. Uh, let, well, let's pick up on, on the trade, and uh, you could almost hear the, the gasps as, as President Trump said, everything's on the table, including the NHS. Theresa May tried to ameliorate that, but th th no. that, that's going to touch some nerves. Yeah, absolutely. I think this has been a problem for the Americans ever since the American ambassador uh, spoke on the BBC the weekend uh, just passed suggesting that the NHS was going to be open to up for grabs effectively. Um, Donald Trump has doubled down on that. You could see the Prime Minister trying desperately claw that back and say, well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, not so, not so fast. But of course, um, as soon as you start opening up the, uh, the doors for negotiation, anything's going to be up for grabs. And clearly the Americans are looking at getting their pharmaceutical companies in here. And the Conservatives are going to have to be very, very careful, I think, if they are still in power at that point, that he has allegations about trying to privatise the NHS through the back door aren't levelled against them. I mean, Bronwyn, uh, they're both technically right. Yes, of course, everything's on the table. And of course, the NHS, whatever, will be part of a negotiation. I, I think yes and no. I think we, we don't know how much Britain can dig in on the NHS. I mean, the fact is quite a lot of NHS services are, are provided by private companies now, and some of those have American ties. So the picture is muddier, but the symbol, symbolism of it is not muddy at all. Uh, he must know. Uh, as Theresa May and any Prime Minister would know, that the, the NHS is totemic here. And it, that's going to be very, very difficult. Well, what I think is also going to be very difficult for, for Britain is the question of these famous chlorinated chickens, because the, the UK is going to have to decide. Is it going to be closer to the EU, where it really wants a deal, or closer to the US? But our, our food standards will stay the same, which may play a part in that. Well, there's room for ambiguity in that one, too. And like all trade deals, I think some of this may turn on ambiguity. Our food standards may be the same, but this is about the conditions in which chickens are raised uh, and the, the sanitary conditions as well. Uh, James, anybody who thinks the president doesn't get irony, I mean, he was smiling broader than most when he said, well, I don't like to comment on what's going on in other places. <laughs> uh, and, and then he answered lots of questions about the succession, the Conservative leadership succession. Uh, interesting, he said he'd, he'd never met Michael Gove, because he has. Uh, but he was, he was treading a fine line and he knew it. I think so. I mean, there's one thing between Trumping, uh, uh, tweeting, which of course Donald Trump does an awful lot, uh, and of course... Trumping, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then speaking with the Prime Minister. <laughs> I, I thought if, if there was going to be any areas of great controversy, it was probably going to be there. And I think actually um, that passed quite uh, as well as the Prime Minister could have hoped for with regard to him, as you say walking a fine line between coming down and making reference to one or two people. He made a, a kind reference to the, uh, the Foreign Secretary there, for example, uh, trying, I think, to spread the love around, as Donald Trump would think. Spread the love, except, Roman uh, for Jeremy Corbyn, who he says, uh, he, he asked to see me and I, I, I didn't. Yep, he made a, a distinct point for that, uh, extending, if you like, his feud that he's already had with uh, Sidney Khan, the Mayor of London. Uh, no, when he chooses to say he doesn't want to deal with someone, he, uh, he, he says that. Um, so I think nothing nothing there at the moment. A, a quick word on trade, James, because mm -hmm. both make the point. We're talking two countries with, with huge uh, interests, mutual interests in terms of trade. You're absolutely right. I mean, all too often, I think, over the last 48 hours, there's been great discussion about the United States and its behemoth status with regard to the United Kingdom and the idea that they could sort of leverage whatever trade deal they want. But um, as was being said there in the press conference, you know, we are so vital to one another's uh, inward investment. Uh, the amount of people who go to work for British companies in the United States, the Prime Minister was very, very clear there with regard to that. So uh, certainly there is going to be some furious negotiations over the coming weeks, months, and maybe even years 
with regard to trying to strike a deal. But uh, we shouldn't underestimate our own position here. Donald Trump was very uh, uh, vocal in terms of saying how we should enter our the negotiations with the EU from a position of strength. Well, if we take that same approach with regard to the United States, then that might not be a bad place to start. Very uh, briefly, Bromman, and, and finally, where do you think the state visit has left the negotiations as of now? exactly where they were. I think we knew what was at stake on both sides. We knew the incentives for both sides to do a deal. We've had the spectacle uh, repeated this week and ongoing of how the US uh, deals with trade partners, how the Trump administration deals with trade partners, Mexico, uh, uh, you know, a new front uh, on top of China. Um, I'm not sure it's, it's changed it very much. Bronwyn, good to talk to Bronwyn and uh, James Boyce. Thank you both very much for joining us here on BBC News.